Hi, I'm Felicia. And I'm John Carlo. And this is our review of Clockwork Kingdom. It's a steampunk um, uh, world. Is it Paris? What's a steampunk world? <sighs> You're fired. That's it. I can't, I can't, I can't do Because it's this. a steampunk world and I don't yeah, know steam, what it means. Steampunk, steampunk. Like steampunk is, um, okay, steampunk is like, picture, picture world, uh, industrial revolution. Okay. And, and everything is steampunk, but you also have magic introduced into it. Okay. Uh, so instead of like fantasy. Yeah. So like I'm an idiot for not knowing that. Yeah. <laughs> In the steampunk worker placement, the king has died with no heir, and players will vie for power for the clockwork kingdom. Set the board in the middle of the table, find the warehouse cards from schematic cards and place them face up here. Shuffle the rest and reveal five, placing the deck next to the row. Shuffle the 12 production facility cards, place them on this space and reveal the top card. Shuffle the ruins cards and place the deck here. Separate the material tokens by type, wood, canvas, steel and copper in their respective pool. Place all alchemy stones in a pool as well. Now all worker standees should be in their respective pile, being automaton, alchemist, artificer, and professor. Give each player a player mat. They'll choose a color and receive their 11 military tokens of their color along with their worker stands. Each will place five automatons in them. Randomly determine a first player and in clockwise order, each player will place a military token on the left most available statue in King's Park. You're now ready to play. At the end of the ninth round, have the most points and you'll rule the Clockwork Kingdom. Starting with the first player and then going in sequence, as determined by the player order track, each player will place a single worker on any of the open spaces on the board. During the course of the game, it is possible for a player to obtain more workers than others. That player will in effect have extra turns to do during a round, while the other players pass. There are eight areas on the board, going from one to eight. Some areas are open spaces, meaning any number of workers can be on these areas. Others will have circles on them. This means that space there is limited as placing a worker there will cover it up, leaving less availability. When all players have placed all their workers, we resolve the areas in numerical order. Each will grant a player a benefit or reward. Let's take a look at these. Starting with the market, any worker there will garner their player the material listed on that space. Storage is limited on your player board to a maximum of six, unless you built a warehouse, which will grant you another two extra spaces. Having placed an alchemist on any space here will have the player obtain any material, regardless of what the space says. Or, should all the spaces be full when placing a worker, the alchemist can still go to the market and receive a random resource. Now, all workers' ability are conveniently listed in the back of the rulebook. We'll get to how you can get extra different type worker a little later on. Next, we resolve the alchemy lab. Simply put, the player with the most influence here will get an alchemy stone. Every worker counts as one influence, unless that worker is an alchemist, in which case he adds two influence. Ties are broken by the player who is first on the turn order track. The winner will place one of these on the available spaces on their player mat. This will allow that player to change or transmute one material into another and vice versa. In the workshop, starting with the leftmost worker, its owner can take either a face-up schematic or build one from their yard by paving the required resources. Space is limited on your player mat for schematics in the yard, so taking an extra schematic when full will have you discard one of your choosing. When a schematic is complete, discard the resources used, place it next to your player mat and do its effect if any. An artificer played in the workshop will allow you to build a schematic for one less resource. A professor there will allow that player to build and take a schematic in any order. In the ruins, each worker there will grant its owner a ruins card. These can be played during the game for different effect. You can see some samples here. There is a maximum hand size of 4 and going over will have you immediately choose and discard the excess. We'll skip the battle for kingdom areas on the corners of the board for now. We'll get back to these. In the university, starting with the leftmost worker, his player will move it on one of the available spaces. He'll then take a worker of the appropriate type as listed and place it on his colored base and in his worker pool area on his player mat. A professor placed onto a space here will grant that player any worker of his choosing. Now the factory works the same way as the alchemist lab, except the player with the most influence here will win the top face-up production facility card. These will supply the player at the end of every round with that material. 
flip over the next card for the next round. An artificer placed here will grant that player 2 influence instead of 1. Lastly, King Spark will adjust player's turn order by moving the military tokens on the statue where their workers are on. When placing a worker here, you can only ever place one and you must place it to the left most available space. When King Sparks resolve, don't forget to take any bonuses that space will award, mainly cards. Sometimes you may also get materials as well because any space that did not have a worker placed there will have you place a random resource there for the next round. When done, all players will take back only 5 of their automatons, place them in their worker pool and discard all other workers back in the reserve. Move the round marker up and a new round begins, having players place one worker at a time following the turn order sequence and repeating the process for 9 rounds. Going back to the battle for kingdom areas, these are very important in the game. Starting with the letter A and going clockwise, each worker in a space will have its owner place a military token in that area. You only have 10 of these. One is used for turn order, so use them wisely. Unlike workers, these tokens remain on the board until the end of round 3, 6, and 9, where they'll score. Scoring is as thus. In round 3, the player with the most military tokens there scores 4 victory points, and the second player scores 1. There are tiebreakers, but these change from round to round, so we won't really be touching on them. Round 6 will have the player with the most score, 5 VP, and 2 VP for the second most player. The ninth round, the player with the most scores 6 VP, and second place gets 3 VP. When all the battle for the kingdom areas score, all military tokens are removed from the board and returned to the player. There is no score track on the board, so mark your scores using pen and paper or other means. When all scoring is done at the last round, add any additional scores from completed schematics. Lastly, any combination of three resource and or workers will grant that player an extra VP. The player with the most wins. Clockwork Kingdom does a fine job of incorporating its theme in the game through its mechanics. The way every area is are numbered and the importance of this makes sense in a game with the word clockwork in it. But as well as it does this through its mechanics, I feel the artwork and color blindness of it mutes this aspect. To the artist's credit, I don't think it's the artwork that's bad, I just don't think his style is appropriate. And why so bland with the colors? Maybe it's something I don't get, so half a point penalty only. Besides the artwork, a huge con is actually design. And by this I mean the fact that they went with tokens instead of cubes? And no scoring track on the board? You should have seen our faces when the first scoring round came along and we realized there was no score track. Our jaws dropped. I mean, really? To me, in this day and age, a game like this with no scoring track is equivalent to a cellular phone shop trying to sell you a rotary phone. Wow, like huge no-no. Besides these, there are other design problems. In this game, you need to know what other players' worker pool is. The muted colors make the type hard to see, especially if the standee is sideways. Just have a different colored background on each different type of worker for easy reference. Design-wise, again, the worker standees didn't fit in the base and ruined some of them. I had to file them down because they had these protrusions for some reasons. Anyways, I digress. Game does have good player interaction, tactics as well, but again, it's going to suffer on overall strategy. Why? Because there's an imbalance with the types of schematic cards. Academic schematics, which give you workers, score the same VP as military schematics, which score you extra in-game VPs. Though there's the illusion of end-game victory choice, your best one will always be militarily. Balance is the issue here. From the spread of the ruined cards, which can be very conditional, to not having academic cards be more important by increasing their VP value. We tried this game many times and military always wins over academic. And this of course affects replay value of the game. I know what I need to do every game which offers no real variety. Just do what needs to be done like, well, clockwork. Again, this creates another problem of doing everything by rote and you feel like an automaton. Half point penalty only because this is due to the imbalancing flaw. It's too bad because with its innovative mechanic of timing and type of worker this worker placement game plays out, it did offer something a little different. But right now with its shoddy design and unbalanced end scoring schematics, there are just way better worker placement games out there. Unfortunately, Clockwork Kingdom gets a score matching its look. A bland 5 out of 10.
which is ironic because I gotta be at work in 25 minutes. So like, <laughs> You're never gonna make it. I'm never gonna make it at all. She Geeks will be closed today. Because we're gonna hours. smoke weed all day. <laughs> we'll be in the park across the yeah, street. Yeah, I love how you have a jingle for it. Because we're gonna smoke weed all day. We'll be in the park across the street from She Geeks with games. <laughs> so that's where our game. You know, it's game. funny. James actually. James Does that? No, no. Oh. Like, he's like, hey, dude, what does Justin Trudeau want to do? He wants to legalize pot. Why do we make a spot smoking cafe? I'm like, dude, Why do you not? really want. Because I don't want to fucking explain game board rules to people that are high you know guys like, i like swear if this is a possibility i'm coming into business with you guys yeah absolutely i'll yeah. take care of like that Next side to of the it. first spot so i wonder if there's something like that in um in colorado or even amsterdam no oh yeah but i'm not moving to amsterdam i know i know but i'm saying i uh, just out of curiosity to see oh, if, if it exists board a board game I cafe know. i you know, you you know honestly yeah, good... i don't think i don't this has everything to do with the game of by course the way. it Clock does working. yeah because you uh, I don't. Th I don't think like if you're smoking up, you you really want to play a board game. Like your attention span is, you know what I mean? No. Yeah. Well, maybe party games. That's what I'm. Yeah. If you're like, like... He, I like you, you wouldn't be able to play like this game. No, but here's the thing: well, you would explain to people like, let's say, okay, let's say we have like Beyonce Kush. And there's like an explanation. What of... the fuck is Beyonce Kush? Is that a it's type, a of, type weed? of weed? It's a type of weed. Okay. I just yeah. Don't want to be so cool. let's say. And you have a description, like it makes you feel like this. Da, da, da. So if I know this is the type of game that lasts, yeah, but this is like a thinking. It's a exactly Euro so type game. exactly, and this is what Beyonce Kush would be good for. Now let's say we'd get M thirty nine. It's a little more of a hype, so we can play like something like Concept Fuck, I'm, I'm and be all next like next to Heisenberg over here. Okay, go on. And yeah, so stuff like that. No, no, no go on. And M thirty nine is more what? It's it's not gonna like uh, it's not pass out and watch a movie. It's more. You know, we I can guess. talk and have a beer. It's, it's yeah, so you can play more of a party game. What is it? Sativa? Sativa, yeah, but that's a whole it but see no, it depends how much sativa is in how much T T S C or T S H count TH, is in THC. Yeah, is in the um, the weed. So it's all huh. And purple haze actually is purple. It has like a purple if you look at it in the light. Yeah, it's got like purple strands. We don't do weed at all. I don't. I just, I just know things. <laughs> I'm just very knowledgeable, guys. I have so much useless fucking information. I could tell you how Cindy Lauper wrote time after time. Like that's how bad it is. What? What do you mean? Is that a, based on weed? No, but I'm just saying. Oh, like, okay. How much you, well, you, you know, you know what Billy Idol's white wedding is about, right? No. Are you serious? No, tell me. White wedding is about.